Hey everybody, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper David Burns here with you today. And today we're going to open this hive up coming out of winter. We are still in winter uh, for a few more days. But I want to go ahead and open this hive up. It's about 60 degrees, barely warm enough to do a hive inspection today. And what we're going to be looking at today are these things here. We're going to be looking for what the brood condition is. You know, eggs, larvae, um, are there capped over brood? We're going to be looking if we will look for the queen a little bit see if we see her once we notice that there's brood we don't have to find her that uh readily but if we see her we just see her we're going to see if there's any drones yet uh bees raise their males first before they start raising their queens so we'll see now that it's march the uh, 17th we'll see if they have started raising their drones yet We'll also look to see about the stored resources. I have been feeding these bees a little bit of liquid one-to-one uh, -one sugar water with protein in it. And an overall generalization of the population. And uh, then we'll perform a mite test to see what kind of mite levels we have uh, that develop during the winter. And then finally, we'll assess whether or not we should rotate the deep hive bodies. So a lot of people ask me that question is uh, if all the bees are up high, should I go ahead and put the bottom deep on top of the top deep and rotate the hive? So let's get started. And the bees are consuming an adequate amount of the sugar water. Not a, not a ton, but quite a bit. We'll take off this shell that protects the feeding system. And now we're ready to smoke the bees. Again, these are bees that have overwintered here in Illinois. And they're flying today pretty good. It's just about 60 degrees, sunny, no wind. So I feel like it's a safe time to do a little inspection. I overwintered this colony with uh, a super on top that had a, a decent amount of honey uh, stored in it. And then I fed them the winter be kind um, in the winter. And then I took that off, started feeding them a little more of the liquid now that it's getting a little warmer and they're flying. And again, people ask me, when do you start feeding liquid? And I always say, when bees start to fly, I feel pretty safe and go ahead and feeding them some liquid to generate some brood rearing, stimulating some brood rearing early. And uh, we're going to be looking at some cool things today in the hive. I'm going to be interested in if we have any beetles that overwintered in the winter cluster. I'm going to be looking at this top of the cluster here. Of course, they're not clustered today, but I'm going to see how much they moved up into this top super and how much they ate. And then uh, what size they are, population and everything. A lot of bees are home today because even though I've got some pollen out in the field that they're going to, uh, there's not much here in Illinois for the bees to forage on March the 16th. All right, so this frame we can take a peek at. It's loose. Uh, what I'm looking at and what I'm looking for is any brood or is there a queen? And these are all just bees eating and sitting on this frame of honey. So nothing really going on here. Same thing here. No brood, no queen, no drones, nothing out of the ordinary. I do like to work barehanded. And uh, if the hive is calm and nice, it usually goes pretty well. This frame has still got some weight to it, meaning that it's not a brood frame or has very little brood on it. It's mostly just nectar. All right, what I'm doing now is trying to see down in the open cells to see if I see any eggs, any larvae, because I can see open cells toward the bottom of that frame. They, they don't look like they contain anything like brood. 
Let's take a peek at the other side. On this side here, again, we have mostly just a frame of honey with the bees sitting on it. I'm looking for the queen. Anything that would look and tell me that there's brood. Okay, I do see eggs. Eggs are on this frame in this lower part. So that means the queen could be on this frame. So let's take a closer look. Wherever there's eggs, it tells you that the queen is likely nearby. Certainly, since the egg is standing straight up, she was laying that egg within the last 24 hours. I'm looking and I don't see her. Don't forget about your smoker. Keep puffing it as you go to keep it activated. There's a yellow jacket. Scurry it along. Every little bug this time of the year is attracted to anything you put out like pollen or sugar water, anything you're feeding your bees. All the other insects are going to want some of the, the food that you're feeding your bees. So be careful not to spill it. Leave it out too long. This is a lot lighter in weight, so maybe more brood on it. Okay. I see. Very, I see small high beetle. There's uh, three or four small high beetle on this frame. Let me show it to you. And the queen is on this frame. Beetles, unfortunately, and even in the north, beetles overwinter uh, with the cluster. So you can see at the end of my finger, here's our... Here's our queen that rode through the winter. And here's a beetle walking around. A couple of beetles. And just to let you know that you always got to be mindful of the small height beetle. Keep them under control. They do overwinter. And in the spring, they'll go right to work. Uh, taking off and doing their stuff. So this is handy to know where our queen is. And uh, get eyes on her. And knows she's out there laying eggs on our frames. And so, again, she's right here in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this frame aside outside the hive so that we don't damage the queen. I'll just lean it up against the back of the building here. And we'll keep her safely there. And we'll make a mental note that we need to add more beetle traps, don't we? <laughs> keep the beetles population down. When beetles over right, overwinter right along the through the winter with the bees, um, a lot of times the beetles will get into these honey supers on top of the hive when the bees aren't there. Ah, oh, we got more weight, so that's less brood, more honey, but yeah, there's eggs and larvae. I'm gonna see, I'm, I'd love to see some capped over brood and that way we could look for drones. Drone, capped over drone cells. Uh, that could be, that's a drone cell here, so they are starting to raise drones a little bit. You can kind of use your finger to move the bees around so you can see the uh, capped over pupa there. And some of these on, on the outside edges are raised. And to me, like that one there, could actually be some drones being raised right here. These a couple here, but we'll look for more. And we'll smoke them again. They're, they're not being uh, very defensive at all, but it's always good to smoke. So that things remain calm. Here's a frame that I, I use to make some comb honey. And um, this is left over from last year. That is some beautiful comb honey in these squares. I could harvest that and enjoy it. I might do that and let them refill it. I don't see any eggs in it. Queen hasn't gone over this to this side yet. She was more in the middle, coming up out of the bottom deeps. In just a minute, we're going to take this super off and get down into the deeps to see what went on down there during the winter. I've noticed most of my beetle activity has been up in this super. And last year, this hive was challenging to control the beetles all right another frame of honey capped over uncapped no no brood in the no eggs or anything it's just honey and same with the next one so let's put this back together and then we'll go down one more down into the deep area that's where the 
the bees all live. And if you're new to beekeeping, by the way, I'm sure this is going to be insightful for you to watch this inspection, to know how to handle bees. But I do challenge you, please take a beekeeping course, a class. We offer online courses, online beekeeping classes. Be sure and do that. I'm going to leave my queen safely against the wall just so that I don't knock her off accidentally or accidentally smash her. If I damage my queen now or kill her this early in the year, I cannot replace her. Neither They won't either. They don't have enough drones apparently yet. So the queen is precious. We don't want to hurt our queen. So she's safely on a frame leaning against the, the hive or the building over here while we keep looking deeper. Sometimes as beekeepers, we can make little mistakes in how we handle our hives, handle our frames, and we can actually kill our queen. Let's set this over here out of the way. You can see more of where the bees hung out all winter, kind of clustered in this area here. Again, it's warm enough today to do these little inspections. It's not windy. It's about 60 degrees. It needs to be, there's a small high beetle, it needs to be about 60 before you endeavor to get into your hives. I want to I want to inspect the brood. So I start with the frame against the wall over here so that we can slip it out of the way. It usually contains the least amount of resources. And again, it is so sticky and stuck with propolis. It's not this sticky in the summertime. So you can see how I pulled this up too much when I was using pressure. It was so stuck together. Now I gotta push that back down. It doesn't take much to get it back in place. All right, we're gonna set this aside for a minute and we're gonna smoke again. So when you're watching me do this, don't get mesmerized by what's going on, but rather watch my technique Watch how I'm using my smoker. Watch how I'm handling the frames. And that way you'll learn how you can be a successful beekeeper and how you can do a hive inspection as well. All right, that's a frame filled with um, honey at the top, open cells of nectar at the bottom on both sides. Um, we'll park it right over here. Try, try not to make that loud noise like I'm doing. Be a little softer in separating frames like that. Be quiet when you work your colony. All right. Make sure there's no bees under your frame lip. This is a nice frame of nectar with a little bit of bee bread around the upper side of the open cells. Again, not much there, and it's time to smoke again. I, I'm reading the bees, and they're activity how much they're uh, buzzing around some people will say to me oh no they're getting mad the bees are getting angry eh, not really but they're just getting active the more active they get the more they investigate me sometimes they can become impatient with the hive being open too long so i'm taking all those things in consideration as we look through this hive Right now we're looking for brood. And of course we're looking for the other things that was on our sheet of paper as well. Make sure bees are not underneath here when you take hold of that lip. Okay, this is capped over honey. It's darker, it appears like it's brood, but it's not, it's just dark wax. Same on the other side. No brood here. I'm sure the queen has laid down in here. And to keep things going well, we'll smoke again. This is just, the bees can clean off their antenna re relatively quickly once you smoke them. That's what the smoke does. It lands small microscopic, you know, smoke particles land on the antenna. And then the bees aren't so apt to be able to communicate through receiving pheromones on their antenna because you've smoked them. Then they wipe that off with their antenna cleaner on their leg, and they can talk again. I want to show you some cool things on this frame here. Let me get closer to the camera. You can see here there's white stuff in the comb. 
Some people think it's diseased larvae, but that's actually crystallized either sugar water or honey that the bees allowed to get a little too cold before they got all the water out of it. They'll either use it or get rid of it out of the hive. And it's on both sides. Crystallized sugar water or honey that was placed. Uh, not really honey, uh, but honey, honey is usually about 19, 18 to 19% moisture. And so it doesn't crystallize in the comb generally. But nectar they bring in, if they don't get a chance to dry it down to 18 or 19%, then that moisture can actually crystallize in the frame during the winter. This is really light in weight, so maybe we're looking at brood. Oh, finally we are. Okay, very good. Don't want to keep this out of the hive too long, but you can see here, this is capped over brood. I'm looking for dr evidence of any drone population. Drone brood, I don't see any. This is just pupa that the queen has laid and they've developed now past day 10. They're pupating. I know that many of you have seen me perform a mite test before using sugar, powdered sugar. I'm do it again because we want to know what kind of mite levels did we have going through winter. Need a little bit more. Go down this way. Okay, that's going to be enough for us. So I'll set this frame right here on both sides. Same thing. Okay, we're ready to do our mite test now. That's a fly. And what we're going to do is take our bees that we gathered from our frames, our frame in there. I've already rolled them around a significant amount. And I'm just going to start shaking out and seeing if I can get any mites to fall out of this sugar jar. This is a 1 8 hardware cloth. Now let's take a little glass, a little cup of water or water bottle. And we pour it onto the sugar water because what this is going to do is dissolve the sugar water and will cause our mites to be visible. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so if you do the math, let's see, eight, eight mites out of 300 is uh, da, 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 uh, two, I think 2.66, right? I think that's correct. Um, so we're under three mites per 100. Yeah, three mites per 100 would be nine. So, or, or so. So yeah, we're, you know, this is kind of the threshold, but now that's still a lot. I, I want to reduce this even more. To, so I'm going to really go after these mites. These are bees that I scraped off the bottom board. Let's get those out of the way. Right, here we go. One of the things, if you stay with me in this video, is that oftentimes I get asked, should I rotate my hive bodies and when should I do that? Never rotate hive bodies unless the bottom box is just empty. I mean, you can have some bees walking around, but you do not want to rotate these boxes if you find any evidence of brood in the lower box. Again, we see brood capped over pupa, as well as a little bit of honey around the edges. Same thing on this side as well. This hive, and I see very, I don't see any beetles down here. So this hive is in really good shape coming out of winter. Got some good brood being laid. No, no drone brood, which, you know, we're always wondering when can we start making nooks, when make packages, when can we start raising queens? Well, you need drones to do that. So apparently we're not uh, close enough yet to having drones to mate with virgin queens to support our the nukes that we make. A nuke is a nucleus. It's a, 
usually a four or five frame uh, of bees out of one of these overwintered colonies. And of course, we sell those um, starting in May. All right, very good. This is all we're going to see here. Now, let's talk about rotating the boxes. Is that an option? Because as I look down through, I can tell that all my bees are in this deep box and in the super that I just took off. They have abandoned their bottom box. So it would be good for us to get more activity toward the bottom so my queen can move upward into the boxes above her. So let's put all this back together and let's rotate. Is there a danger in rotating too early? Absolutely. Heat rises. If all the bees are up in the heat of the, of the hive, in the upper deep and the upper super box, and you rotate all the brood uh, down on the bottom, then you're rotating the brood away from the top heat of the hive. So if you do it too early and you don't have a lot of bees, you can have chilled brood. Uh, sort of a disease, a problem with the brood dying down below from a lack of, of heat. All the pupa that we, I showed you has to be kept at about 92 degrees during the winter. There's enough bees here to accomplish that. So I'm, I'm safe. I looked at the temperatures coming up. We're not going to have 20 below temperatures anytime soon. So I'm comfortable now rotating that. Let's put this last frame back in carefully. There we go. All right, got it back together. Smoking it good. Just so it's more fun to play with bees. All right, let's take that off now. Remember, our queen is safely on another frame. So we're not worried about any injury caused to her. And boy, that's heavy. Mmm, very heavy. Has a lot of honey in it. All right, good. Get that off. The frames, there are no bees at all. That's when you're ready to rotate. Okay, so this, this colony, this hive re requires a rotation. Here's how you rotate. You're gonna take our hive tool because it's usually going to be stuck to the bottom board. The bees will get confused temporarily because they're looking at the this deep hive box front. It's a navigational source. I'm running out of room, so let's just set this over on the ground. Okay. All right. You might as well scrape out any uh, dead bees, anything that might be foreign on the bottom board that you don't want in your hive. Sometimes this gets kind of nasty coming out of winter. You might find a dead mouse in there. <laughs> Alright, let's put our... Now this is our top deep. It's going to become the bottom deep. We're rotating because there was no brood at all in that bottom deep. I'm going to set it right here. We uh, Lined up pretty well. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you about is the queen. Let's see if she's safely still on the frame that I want her to be on. If not, I've got big problems, right? Here's the frame I put her on for safekeeping. And I see her. I just lean this against the wall over there. And do you see her right here? Right there. So if I grab her by her wings like this, I have a hold of the queen now. I'm going to make her go down in the bottom deep. See, I'm going to just set her down in here with the bees. There she goes. See her? She went down in the bottom deep. My queen is safely in there. So now when I put my next deep that's empty, she can rise up into this box and lay eggs. One more look for the queen. Don't see her. Boom. We've rotated these boxes. Okay, so we just put our super back on. So now we actually have our brood nest in the bottom deep, a gap of really no bees at all in the middle, and then a pretty good large number of bees in the top, um, the super here, and that is fine. You might think, what in the world's gonna happen? 
with that big gap in the middle. Not much because there really is little to no brood up here in the top. This is all just their honey stores. And so we're going to leave that here with the bees. The bees know to travel down if they want to to get back with the queen in the bottom deep. And as they do, they're going to be going through the middle section and revving it up for brood production. Okay, so still battling small high beetle in this upper honey super, the only place that we saw them. So here we go with more beetle traps. I have put olive oil in there because it was readily available. And I'm going to place one here. And I'm going to actually put several traps in. All right, so we're done with our hive inspection. Able to get into the hive, take a look. And remember, this, these are the things that we were looking for here. We were actually trying to see how much brood we had. Did we see our queen? Were there any drones? What kind of stored resources did they have? What were their population? What was the mite test? Should we rotate the deep hive bodies? I answered all these questions for you. The brood, not bad for coming out of winter. We had three frames at least uh, with both sides of half of the frame had brood on it. So we're pleased with that. We found the queen. We were able to isolate her when we did our inspection, kept her safe. We never want to kill the queen during these early uh, late winters or early spring um, inspections or you'll kill her and can't get another one. We may have seen some drone brood starting, but nothing at all uh, impressive. Stored resources, plenty. Population, good. Mite test, I would say average three mites per 100 we were 2.66 but we are going to take some actions to reduce that and then once we saw that the bottom deep was entirely empty of anything we rotated it giving the bees a chance to move back up into all that empty uh, comb so that was a good decision to make that rotation so i hope this was helpful going through these things here these are questions everybody asks me and uh, we're feeding them we don't have dandelions for probably two or three more weeks, maybe four weeks. It depends on the weather. But once we get dandelions, we can stop feeding. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, please ding the subscribe button and subscribe. Click on the bell. You'll be notified when I produce another video and you'll enjoy them and give you more beekeeping tips. All right. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.